Hey everybody, Mike here at MS Tutorials and welcome back to a new video. All right, well, I recently did a video on XGen and how you can use XGen to create hair and fur and grass and so forth. Uh, but there's also another uh, cool thing you can do with XGen and that is to create instances, okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that you can take an object like a tree or a rock or whatever, and you can use that to populate a scene. So you can create a forest or a desert and something like that, all right? Now, in order for you to do that, you need to have one or more items that you add to your archive, and then you load that up into XGen. But I'll go through the steps with you, all right? Now, um, there is a very cool uh, tutorial out there on YouTube by Stephen Rosell. He did a video on how to uh, create a forest, uh, and actually that video was spot on. But the reason why I'm doing this tutorial is that one is not done in my 2016. And the menus have changed, and I actually did his tutorial, but had a very hard time finishing it because I simply couldn't find certain things, all right? So in the meantime, I figured out how it works, so let's do that. Uh, I'm gonna do the scene as well. So I'm just gonna take a uh, polygon plane here. I'm gonna hit R to scale it out because my scale is in centimeters, so we'll do something like this. And then we'll just uh, tweak it a little bit so it's not too flat, okay? So I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard for soft select. I'm gonna right click and go to vertex. And as you can see, when I hover my mouse, you got this yellow and red area. And I want that area to be a bit bigger. So I'm gonna hold down B, left click and drag to increase the affected area. And I'm just gonna start clicking on vertices and just kind of tweak the shape here a bit, okay? Just so it's a little bit less boring. All right, so we got that. We're gonna hit B on our keyboard, the keyboard to turn that off. Right click object mode, and let's apply a material to it. Right click, assign new material. Let's do a Lambert. And I'll hit the checkered box here. We'll select file, folder, and on my desktop, I have a snow texture. All right, let's turn on this guy so we can see it. <coughs> Excuse me. And that looks okay, All right? We'll just check it up here, UV and UV editor. We'll do, yeah, there we go. It's exactly in the zero to one space, so that's fine, okay? So that's that. Now we're gonna create some sky. So I'm gonna go to my render settings. And keep in mind, guys, this is quick and dirty, all right? So just so we have something in our background. I'm gonna go to scene and I'll create image-based lighting which allows me to select an HDRI file, documents Maya, HDRI, and I'm gonna use Sky 1, <clears throat> okay? Now, I get asked a lot, where do you get these files? <clears throat> Try hdrlabs.com, okay? There are a lot of them that you can use, uh, download and use for free. I'll just scale this a little bit, and then we'll take this guy and scale that down a bit. Hit F to zoom in. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we'll have something like this. <clears throat> Maybe scale that up a bit. Okay, so let's uh, bookmark that. We're gonna go to view, bookmark, edit bookmark, and we'll call this new, and apply and close. All right, so next, we need to have an object, okay? Now, I'm gonna use a tree as well, like Stephen did. And for that, I'm going to uh, import a polygon tree. Let's just hide this stuff for a minute. Hit Control H to hide it. And that as well. And then I'm going to go to File and Import. And in my Maya folder, I have a number of trees. Let's go with this one. Import it. And there it is. Modify center pivot. We're going to hit W and let's pull that in. Okay, so this is our tree. That's what we're going to use. Okay, now I need to create an archive based on this tree. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
go back to display, show all. I'm going to select my ground plane because that's where I want my trees to be later on. Okay. And I'm going to select the X gen. So that's up here. I'm going to open the menu by clicking on this X here. And let's give the system a second. There we go. And I'm going to create a new description. Now I want this to be called, let's say, forest and I believe I used that before so I'll just call this forest 5 okay and within my forest I want to create trees and I'll do five there as well now you can have multiple things in the forest you can have grass trees animals whatnot that's why there can be more than one collection in a forest okay now in my previous video I used splines in this case we're going to use custom uh, geometry and archives okay Initially, we're going to use uniform rows and uh, let's see, we're going to use attributes controlled by expressions. So we're going to hit create and it says archives list is empty simply because we don't have any archives yet. Okay, and we need to create one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and select our tree. We're going to go to file export selection as archive. All right. Now it's going to ask me where I want to save that. So let's do local archives right there. And that's all good. And we're going to export. And it says that I need to save my scene first. So we'll do that. I'll just call this uh, new trees. There we go. And as you can see, it's starting to process. I'll just pause the video until that's done. Okay, it's done with that. So now we're going to go into our primitives tab and I can actually take this tree now and delete it. We're going to go into our primitives tab and we're going to scroll down to archive files and we're going to click on add. Okay, and I'm just going to go through the path that I need for my trees and it's under projects it's under default it's under xgen it's under archives and here you have the xarc file which is what i need okay i'm gonna hit okay and it says that it has associated material files that's fine uh, let's see it's having some issue here. Let's see if we're good. Yeah. And as you can see, we have a tremendous amount of trees that have been created. Thousands and thousands. Okay. Now, obviously, I don't want that because it's going to make my system very slow. And it's a huge, huge, huge forest. We don't want that. My system is lagging, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the density uh, to a much lower value. Uh, so we are able to work so the spacing right now is one let's do a spacing of 80 okay and already you can see that you know the number of trees is much much lower but it looks very unnatural because it's very much in uniform rows okay so what we're going to do there is instead of in uniform rows and columns we're going to select that and we're going to uh, use randomly across the surface and again, it has some sort of issue with that, but that's fine. We're going to click on preview. Looks like we got a tree just right in front of us, which is not good. Let's just uh, rotate that a little bit. All right. So what I did in primitives is I reduced the density from 1 to 0 0.01. So now if we go to our bookmark, you have the trees set up in this way and they're positioned randomly okay and now there are a number of things that you can do here for example you can tweak the length of the trees you can have them instantly grow if you like right now the width and the depth that wouldn't be a very good idea because you get very weird trees you can tilt them to one way or another and again a bit weird to do that but it's possible if you want them to be um, you know affected by wind and so forth you can twist them a uh, bit weird effect there so that's more something you would use based on I would say a different geometry okay and let's see what else do we got here 
Um, we got that selected. Obviously, you can add more than one archive. So I got one tree right now. Uh, if you want to mix that up, you can have, let's say, two or three or ten or whatever you want. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Now, the next thing we need to do is to make sure that the trees are not all facing the same direction. All right. All right. So let's just uh, close this down here. Now, the thing here is that because we only used one tree, right, it looks kind of uniform. Uh, but by adding multiple trees and playing with the density, you know, we'll have much more of a forest look, if you will. And because we chose random instead of uniform, in uniform you have the spacing value, and random you have the density. So let's increase this a little bit. Let's do uh, 0 0.08. That's actually quite a lot. Let's do a little bit less. So you get a fairly decent looking forest uh, feeling to it. Okay. And I guess this is a nice shot. So um, what we can do is we can add a little bit of light. So what we'll do is we'll go to render settings and uh, actually let's use directional light for that. We'll create lights and uh, let's see where do you go directional light. We'll just uh, pull that up. We're going to hit 7 on our keyboard, which will give us a sense of light. We'll hit T to aim it. Let's point that downwards. So you kind of get some shading going on on the floor there. And we're going to go to View, Bookmark, New. Maybe zoom out a little bit. It's hard to kind of get the right angle for your trees when they're not there yet. Just trying to find something that looks appealing. Okay, we're going to bring that down a bit. A bit more. Let's uh, bring that density down a bit. All right. Well, you get something like that. And, um, and now at least you know where to find all the menu options in my 2016. And if you want a more detailed look, uh, I guess it will be a good idea to check out Stephen's um, video. And I'll put a link to his video underneath. All right. So it's kind of a new thing for me. So uh, sorry it was a bit glitchy, but uh, hopefully you still learned something. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.